Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. Today we're going to be looking at a piece by the artist Dong Lu Lu. She is actually a career digital artist working primarily in the medium of digital paint. And the reason I say career artist is because she's actually quite known for her concept art, which blends this incredible sense of objective realism with her stylistic profile. And we're going to talk a little bit more of that deeper in the episode. She is an artist based in Montreal, Canada, and she creates a ton of different scenes from science fiction to a little bit of fantasy and everything in between. So in this work, we're going to be talking about kind of intensity of light. We're going to talk about diversity of color. We're going to talk about crystals and why we put, place those on such a high pedestal. And then we're also going to tie it off with the idea of the eyes as the window to the soul. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this piece, you're likely going to be caught by just the flood of the amount of color within this work. And this, of course, is an incredibly diverse color palette. You see this everywhere from this green to that blue to these purplish pinks to the red, those orange and, and everything in between. Just an incredibly diverse color palette here in the spatial composition. And this utilizes this really unique intensity of light to really send that sense of vibrancy, that kind of vivid color palette that just captures your attention with absolute ease. And of course, this intensity of light and all of these kind of fragmented crystalline type forms, those all really combined with each other, of course, light with color and form all to really create a very energetic spatial composition. It almost feels like there's so much going on here and a lot of bit of motion within that. So I think that's really important to note whenever we take a look at this work. And so you'll see here is, of course, we have a massive eye and the eye is kind of enlarged. It takes up a majority of the digital spatial composition. And this canvas is just filled with the form of that. We're gonna talk about how that elevates importance here in a second. But first, I just wanted to take a note on the ideas of crystals or gemstones. And we see here is that kind of the retina, I believe it's called, or the iris of the eye is created in a gemstone or a crystal form. And crystals or gemstones are actually really, really unique to me because we place them on such a high pedestal, whether we wear them in jewelry or you kind of stare at it and put it into the light, it always captures your attention and we're kind of mesmerized by that. And the reason why that is, at least in my opinion, is that crystals and gemstones act as divine catalysts of light. And what I mean by that is whenever light hits a gemstone or light hits a crystal, of course, it is translucent. So the light passes through it and then it refracts it, refracts it as well as reflects it and kind of acts as a catalyst for the intensity of light in every direction. So we could tie that back to the idea of that intensity of light, how, how this crystal form really um, reinforces the theme of that whenever we take a look at this work here. So whenever I look at gemstones or crystals, I really see them as divine catalysts of light. And the reason I say divine is because, well, for almost all of human history, whether it's folklore to mythology and eventually to religion, we have always seen the light as something that is divine. So when, whenever we take a look at gemstones, because they intensify light and act as catalysts of light, that kind of acts as a, a priceless piece which could be seen as the divine and i believe that that's why we put them say on the tops of crowns and we wear them on necklaces and rings and everything in between because it's almost like we're wearing a piece of, of the divine and we're always trying to bring it with us and we'll talk a little bit more that about that here in a second but i think that's really important to note whether it's the intensity of light or just the crystalline form in here, those all really work together to uh, impact the final visual experience that we see before us. And so, of course, we're taking a look at the eye here, and it just fills up so much of the spatial composition. And it's hard to say if the artist did that intentionally for one reason or another, but the reason that I was speculating is because whenever something is enlarged within the spatial composition, it's normally trying to elevate the importance of that element. And so... Whenever you take a look at this, for example, the eye fills so much of the digital canvas and that as a result may be emphasizing or elevating the importance of the eye as a symbol or the eye is just our subject within this work here. So I think that's really important to note. And I believe William Shakespeare once said that the eyes are a window to the soul. And we've really picked that up and we've kind of, you know, posted that all across cultures everywhere. And we could see that both literally and metaphorically true. Say... 
when it's whenever we're taking a look at say literally true the eyes are the window to the soul because whenever we're directing our attention to something we are showing that we are interested in it and so if our soul is kind of being intentional and directing our attention towards a specific thing then the literal direction of our eye contact or our, our the the our direction of attention can really show the person what we're trying to focus on. So that's kind of a literal symbolism there for the eye as a window to the soul. And then, say, metaphoric symbolism as the eye as a window to the soul, we could see that, say, how intimate eye contact is or just how whenever you look into someone's eyes, you can almost uh, you, you can kind of feel the life and feel the vibrancy. And I think that also reinforces that that intimate element there. So the eyes as a window to the soul is a really popular theme and a really popular quote that almost everyone has heard. But I think it's incredibly important, especially when we're taking a look at this work here. And once again, we see yet another example of, say, divine consciousness. We are divine beings because we can plan ahead, we can even create art, and we can abstract things in many different ways. You know, it's not to say that, say, something like a, a, a house cat or, or a pet isn't conscious because they are living beings, but it's hard to know whether a cat plans for days, weeks, or months ahead. The cat is kind of just living in the moment. But as, as uh, humans and kind of the spirit of the human consciousness, we can abstract behavior, we can create stories out of them, we can create art out of them, and we can really learn from that over so much time. And so I think that it's really important to note because we are divine beings by nature of that. Say even whenever you're thinking about something, you kind of ask yourself a question and a and something surfaces back. And we ask ourselves, where did that thought come from? And so those are all answers that we can't really explain, even consciousness itself or why we create art. It's, it's kind of hard to pin down. But I think the eyes are an incredible source of that. Whenever you're looking in the eyes of someone, you can just feel that life and feel that sense of liveliness. So I think that's really important to note whenever we're taking a look at this work in specificity. And so like I said, this piece is made by Dong Lu Lu. She is actually a Canadian uh, career artist working with, uh, what's it called? Uh, concept art. There we go. Sorry, guys. It's pretty late. But she, she does a ton of, ton of different um, stylistic depictions. And the one thing that I notice across her works is just the incredible vibrancy of color. Not only the vibrancy of color, but also the intensity of light within that as well. And so here is actually, so, so this piece marks Dong Lu, Dong Lu's second showcase within the archive to date. And this is actually her first showcase. So her first showcase is, uh, I believe it's called Cyberpunk City or Night City or Cyberpunk Night, <laughs> I would have to double check that. But this piece was actually showcased in April of 2021. So whenever we take a look at that, we can see that she is one of our first artists ever showcased in the gallery. So she really has captured my attention and has really held it there. This is actually a piece that I found in the beginning as well, and only now am I able to go back and rediscover it and kind of break it down and take a look at it. So whenever we're comparing her works, like I said, her concept art really uses kind of objective realism, but also the influence of her stylistic profile, say these fragments, which just go so many different ways and that intense vibrancy of color and that intensity of light as well. So I also see that within this work as well. You see how that kind of blue purple color palette there, but the intensity of light is clearly there and you see both of those as well. This is actually a digital painting, which is quite remarkable to me. This almost looks like a rendering. And so, like I said, the objective realism of her work is just stunning and it's clear that she is a very a career and very established and very dedicated digital artist. So I think that's really important to know. And so that's really the big thing that I see in relation to both of her works, that intensity of light and just the incredible vibrancy of color that she depicts within her works. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. We talked a little bit about the eyes as the window to the soul. We talked about intensity of light. We talked about diverse color. And then we also connected her stylistic identity or stylistic profile across two different works that we've showcased so far. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Go check out some of Dong Lu Lu's other works. She's on ArtStation. She's all over. And there's a ton of different places you can check her out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. 
Polar Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.